Hello friends, my name is Marines and recently on booktube there has been a wave of discussion about how we choose what to read and specifically about how author behavior ultimately feeds into those decisions. Because I recently discussed authorial intent and authors entering into review spaces, this is something that has been bouncing around in my head and even more so after I mentioned in my review of Breach of Peace that it was a story that some readers might not want to get into because it dealt with with police violence and there were some comments kind of puzzling over if that was a fair assessment or whether or not that was reasonable or unfair to the work and to the author. So as I'm working this all out in my head, enter Lauren Huff. I'm going to give a general overview of what happened with Lauren Huff here, but this is by no means an extensive overview. As I am recording this, Jess Owen's community video for this week is not up yet, but it should be up by the time that I publish this and I'm sure she will have a more comprehensive look at what actually actually happened. I will link that below as well as some other videos that I've seen talking about this idea of how we choose what we read. Essentially Lauren Huff is an essayist whose debut collection of essays, Leaving Isn't the Hardest Thing, came out on April 13th. The day of her release she tweeted about doing the unhealthy thing and looking up reviews on Goodreads. She ended up tweeting about a five-star review that she received and then commented under that Goodreads assholes still giving four star reviews to show their super tough reviewers who need to like fall in love, you know? Anyway, no one likes you. She then screenshotted two comments in which reader notes that she gave the collection four and a half stars and rounded up on Goodreads. Goodreads doesn't have decimal point ratings, so it's either four or five. So if you use like a half star system, you have to decide whether you're going to round up or down. This one reader said that she rounded up and someone replied to her and said, I also gave it four and a half stars. I rounded down. Huff's comment of the screenshot was grow up. As this spread around Twitter, on book Twitter, where to be clear, Huff put it herself, she tweeted first and it started to spread and people were reacting to her behavior. And then her reaction as the spread was kind of all over the map. She went private for a bit. She came back and said that she would not delete the tweets. She blamed the tweets on tweeting while high. She did delete some of the tweets and then she said she most certainly did not blame the tweets on tweeting while high. Lauren was presumably at one point searching her own name on Twitter. She was quote tweeting these tweets and like reacting to them, adding further insult and then blocking the person, leaving them to deal with like the blowback from her supporters. I mentioned her in a tweet last week. I didn't tag her. And then Monday when I logged back into Twitter after the weekend, that tweet had like a bunch of new notifications on it. So I freaked out and I was like, oh my goodness, did she like retweet this? And I looked up her profile to see if she had retweeted it or anything new had happened and she had me blocked. So <laughs> at one point she was just quote tweeting people and telling them to eat shit. As a reaction to this, people sort of review bombed her book on Goodreads and started rating it one star. Lauren then tweeted this showing the, the ratio of like five and one star reviews on her book and said that this was the equivalent of readers sort of telling her to shut up and take it. When somebody asked her if basically she thought she deserved all five star reviews, her response was basically that her book was just really freaking good. She also is coming from a place of being like confident that she will have the last laugh, which is sort of apparent to me in her behavior and the way she keeps doubling down. But also she tweeted that she will have the last laugh when basically her book is being taught in schools. She also started comparing people pointing out that the backlash was a consequence of her own actions to the victim blaming she faced as a survivor of sexual assault. She called reviewers not Nazis, self-appointed vigilantes, and nerds on a power trip. She also went on to attribute a lot of the backlash to misogyny, saying that this sort of thing only happens to female authors, and saying that it is essentially anti-feminist to criticize or dislike her book or her behavior. I saw a few authors speaking ab about the inappropriate behavior towards readers and reviewers and specifically TJ Klune chimed in again without using her name or tagging her in his thread but she quote tweeted him and basically said that he was also a misogynist and that he shouldn't publicly come for another author. 
Throughout all of this, she did have supporters and people essentially defending her, including people excusing her behavior because Lauren has PTSD and basically saying that we should have expected and excused this behavior. I'm not unsympathetic to Huff and how terrifying a time a release date must be. I am also not unsympathetic to how triggering the backlash must have been for her. My issue was the doubling and tripling down instead of just apologizing. And I'm usually somebody who takes issue with people who go on social media breaks in lieu of a meaningful apology, but in this case, even removing herself would have been better. I personally think that despite our reputation, the book community doesn't have an especially long memory, and also in the grand scheme of things has so little impact on the buying behaviors of readers in general. The reason we are still talking about Lauren Huff a week after her release is that she kept engaging and insulting readers and reviewers. This is why I truly think that authors should not reply to reviewers reviews or publicly call out specific reviews. If she wanted to talk generally about her criticisms, that's on her. But the moment she started showcasing specific reviews and comments and insulting people for giving her four and a half stars on Goodreads, that's that's where it kind of like crossed the line for me. When I talked about authors entering review spaces in my authorial intent video, some people commented and asked me if that meant that I thought that authors and readers should not engage at all, or if I thought that authors could not address criticism of their work or talk about their own work, and I certainly do not think either of those things. The internet is full of venues and opportunities for authors and readers to connect, I run a whole entire event that invites authors and readers and reviewers to sit on panels together and connect over a mutual love of stories and media. I think that those connections in panels and interviews and on social media and things of that nature are certainly meaningfully different than authors seeking out reviews and replying to those reviews, especially negative ones. Now, I think that Lauren Huff's book will be fine. Throughout all of this, she was hitting Amazon charts and collecting glowing professional reviews. I mentioned that her book will be fine to preface this point because I understand that she might not care because the impact it causes her is minimal, but this just seems like a really terrible way to engage with the consumers of the product that you are trying to sell. And I know that it's a book, it's an art, it is also nonfiction, which kind of changes the dynamic, but ultimately it is also a product that you would like people to buy. I don't understand the thinking behind insulting those people or belittling them? No author, including Lauren Huff, is entitled to readers time or money or attention. And no artist, including Lauren Huff, is entitled to exist above or outside public opinion. As readers, we are all doing this hobby within the allowances of limited resources. None of us is blessed with unlimited time or unlimited money. And so we have to make choices about what things we will read. We all do this and we all do this all of the time. In addition, to the things that we kind of know at face value about the content of the book, we also use things that are apart from and outside of the content of the book to make these decisions. We all both pick books to read and eliminate books from our pool. That is part and parcel of being a reader. I think it is absolutely valid to allow author behavior to inform whether you'd like to support an author financially or invest time in their story. If I've only got $20 and 20 minutes, I have some decisions to make here. And deciding not to spend my $20 on an author who insulted reviewers, and it's not even that she insulted reviewers, that she called them assholes or nerds on a power trip because whatever, that's kind of like apart from that. It was like the vibes of what she was saying and that in using these insults and the way that she spoke about reviewers and readers was really like belittling. It was like she had no value for the people who took time and money to read her story and then additional time to basically provide free marketing and giving her these four and a half star reviews on Goodreads. You do not owe a book your audience. And sometimes we get so caught up in the elevation of books Books in a way that, if you ask me, comes directly from the sort of gatekeeping of literacy, that we talk about books in a way that makes no sense. For instance, if your friend went to a restaurant and told her other friend at the table that the food was fire, but one of the dishes was a little bit salty, and then the chef came out of nowhere to come and insult you and call you an asshole and tell you that you were being unnecessarily picky or whatever it was, and then your friend told you, hey, the food might be good there, but the owner is really a jerk and insults his 
patrons, like maybe don't go there. I imagine you would go, oh, okay. And not a lot of people around you would argue that you had to go and try the food and that you couldn't decide not to give that restaurant your patronage just based solely on the service. Also, let's get this clear. All reviews are subjective, all of them. You are never giving your objective opinion. Even when it feels that way in your heart, I understand. <laughs> I have opinions about books that feel so objective, but at the end of the day, they are still my opinions, which make them subjective. You are also, my friend, not unbiased. Society puts such a high value on unbiased reporting and reviewing, and so we come to believe, one, that that is possible, and two, that there is an inherent value in putting aside your humanity and not considering how your experience and your worldview and your point of view informs the way that you view stories or the way that you take them in. We are all biased <laughs> to some degree, and all of our opinions are subjective. Goodreads is subjective because it's a review website, not because it's a review website where people don't like Lauren Huff. I saw a lot of people saying also that Goodreads was unreliable, but that very much depends on what you are relying on Goodreads for and who you are relying on in that community. So many people got up on high horses about how subjective and unreliable Goodreads and reviews in general were. I mean, this all started because Lauren was upset at a Goodreads review, specifically two people deciding that her book was four and a half stars and one person deciding to round that up and one person deciding to round that down. I saw some tweets from author Stephanie Land defending this as well. Basically in those tweets, Land was saying that Huff didn't punch down. She was just pointing out that it was silly to give a book four and a half stars and round down. The person who replied to Land in this thread said, well, she also kind of crapped on the person that rounded up. And Stephanie Land's response to that was that this person should get a hobby. Is that even a good insult? We're here because of a hobby? There were also plenty of tweets talking about the bias of star ratings. One Twitter user put it this way, it's why I don't find the star rating system particularly useful as a reader. It's biased for things other than book quality. And it's, <laughs> I kept seeing these tweets and it was driving me wild because I totally get not enjoying star ratings for whatever your purposes are, right? Either as a reader or consumer of reviews or as a reviewer. I have my video up of how I rate and review books because I think that that's a useful data point for people to understand how I am reviewing and what it means if I say a book is two stars or five stars or whatever else in between. I think that that, that is an interesting subject to kind of approach and a good measure for anybody who is listening to my reviews. I personally think that ratings are really useful. I get that people feel kind of boxed in by them. And a lot of times people want ratings to do what ratings aren't meant to do. They, they want ratings to convey a lot of information and nuance when that is absolutely not their function. Ratings are there for like a hot take at a glance how I felt about this book. If you want the details, if you want the nuance, read the review. But if you just want the hot take, that's what a rating is there for. It is also really good for organization. I've talked about this before. I'm kind of passionate about ratings. But the reason that it bothers me is not because I enjoy ratings, because I totally get why others don't. It's this idea that ratings are more subjective or more biased than a review, or that ratings talk about something other than like book quality and that reviews Talk about book quality when both ratings and reviews take all kinds of information in, including just like plain enjoyment of the book versus quality. But even when I'm talking about the quality of a book, that is incredibly subjective. You could argue that there are objective measures of what makes a book good. Uh, I don't really believe that there are. Even things about grammar rules or me saying something that like, if Sarah J Mass has a thousand M dashes in her book, like those things might seem objective, but then I say that really bothers me and another reader says, I don't care. So <laughs> my hackles are immediately up when we start talking about like objectivity in reviews and, and especially because I feel like as a person of color who does reviews online, this is often weaponized against me when I'm specifically talking about isms. But even if you're talking about something that bothered you. The rallying cry becomes, well, because you are mad or you're having emotions, you can't be objective and so your opinion doesn't count on this matter. And listen, to be clear, I'm basically 
only on Goodreads right now because I'm grandfathered in. I think it is an ugly website with a terrible search function and it is owned by Amazon. Like I am not happy to defend Goodreads on any level. It doesn't allow half stars and that's Goodreads fault. That's not the fault of a reviewer who then has to decide whether to give it four or five stars. And the fact that one reviewer does it one way and another reviewer does it another way is perfectly fine. That's their prerogative. Not even the reviewers that you trust most are using the same measures for reviews or are using the rating system in the same ways. It's so funny to me that this mostly comes up when we're talking about author behavior or authors behaving badly. This idea that like, oh, well, don't trust Goodreads because it's just a bunch of people with their opinions and it's so biased, the star ratings are so biased, but it never comes up when it's authors or author's friends reviewing the book's five stars. And why do you do that if not to sway the sort of reviewing system? I mean, there was also some general upset about people reviewing the book that had not read it and doing the one star review bomb as sort of in a response to like in response to her pettiness over a four and a half star review, people were petty back and started one star reviewing her her book. I personally never review books that I don't finish. I don't rate my DNFs. I also don't rate or review books that I have not read. And in fact, in Goodreads review guidelines, it leaves it very open to say that they may and they can delete those reviews, reviews that are of books that you haven't read, or specifically reviews that are talking more about the author and author behavior than the work. As of this morning, I did see a couple of tweets kind of circulating about Goodreads sending out emails to specific reviewers saying that their reviews were going to be deleted for this purpose. I will say that those are their guidelines and their terms of services, and they might have an issue with people review and rating books they haven't read, but also Goodreads is an organizational tool, and I super appreciate every reader who organizes things or puts things on a shelves like, you know, author who did X, Y, or Z, or author to not support because of whatever reason, because that helps me ultimately in those decision-making processes. Does this mean that I've never read a book shelved as author behaving badly? Absolutely not. I still have to make those personal decisions and kind of measure out my bounds for what I'm willing to dedicate time and money to, but all of these pieces of information are helpful in that process. I think shelving books in that way is a perfectly acceptable way to use Goodreads, but what do I know? They're not my terms of service. I also think it's really funny just like the legalese of it. I understand why it's written this way. I work in HR and I write policy all of the time. So you've got to leave yourself some room to breathe and some room to say, we may or may not do this thing, it's up to us. But I think it's funny that Goodreads uses that language of like, we might, we might delete it. Because more often than not, they probably won't and this covers their butts. Here's the thing too, is that I know that people can be awful. People on the internet can be awful and that extends to every community. So oftentimes when we're having these sort of large group discussions, you've got like the extremes of your communities that are, are doing things that most of us don't agree with. So I think that most of us can agree that wishing harm on somebody or that like level of bullying and harassment is totally uncalled for and not something that we as the reading community want to be known for or want to encourage within or amongst ourselves. And even though the vast majority of us will agree with that, it is often those extremes and those behaviors that you see being allowed to characterize the entire community. So you have people like giving her book one star and putting very clearly in the review, I didn't read this, but I'm choosing not to because of the author's behavior. And you have people like wishing bodily harm. Those two things aren't the same, but they're being conflated and being given as characteristics to readers as a whole. And so this isn't the first time that we've seen a book being review bombed. But sometimes it doesn't happen because of author behavior, but because of author identity. And I just hope that Goodreads maintains the same energy in reviewing those reviews that are attacking somebody's identity as they are in reviewing these reviews because Lauren Huff said we were a bunch of assholes. Although that door that they leave open of IDK might not, <laughs> doesn't make me very confident. Okay, those are all my feelings, I think, and here's the long and short of it. Lauren Huff had a bad reaction to a four and a half star review. And instead of taking it to the group chat, she took it to Twitter. When people started calling out the inappropriateness of her behavior and suggesting to her that she delete, apologize, and walk away, she doubled down and continued to insult readers and reviewers and authors and booksellers. Using that display of behavior as a reason why you don't want to read Lauren Huff's book anymore? 
valid. She doesn't like you, so why would you give her money? And that is your decision to make as a consumer even if you are a consumer of art. Authors in general should be wary of publicly responding to reviews. They aren't meant for authors, and because they are biased and subjective, authors' opinions and responses don't need to go here. Lauren Huff's book will probably be fine, and in fact, I would put money on some sort of like essay or op-ed about the mean and scary readers who attacked her without provocation on the day of her release. Once again, book Twitter and the book community will be characterized as having a way bigger impact than they actually have. In the grand scheme of publishing, people who talk about books online are a drop in the bucket. People think we have way more power to affect outcomes than we actually do. And you can look no further than best-selling books that were canceled by Twitter or at publishers like Simon & Schuster who are called out like once a month for acquiring or agreeing to distribute books by bigots. What readers do have in the publishing industry is the ability to talk amongst ourselves. We have the ability to make personal decisions about what we choose to support. We rely on each other to hear about not only what worked or didn't work in a book, but what authors are out there doing and saying, and how that adds to the big basket of context that we bring to a work as reviewers. Okay, that's it. <laughs> this is certainly not the last time that we will talk about an author having a bad public reaction to a review because it happens all the time. I'd love to chat with you guys in the comments about all of this. Did you see it while it was happening? Like, when did you tune in? How do you feel about Huff's sort of reaction to the reviews that re she received and her increasing reaction and sort of response as it went on? How do you feel about like one star reviewing or rating books that you haven't read and using Goodreads as a tool in that way? And um, I don't really have any questions about like, reviews being subjective because they are. <laughs> uh, I'd love to chat with you about all of it, I promise. Um, and, and you guys always get me thinking in different directions. So if there's anything here that you see in a different light, I, I honestly would love to chat with you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Okay, listen, so I called my sister today as I was preparing to film this video this morning and I said, can you make me a shirt that says nerd on a power trip? And she was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, like no questions like yeah of course I can do that duh and then she was like I've got like a pink shirt on hand I hate crew neck shirts but I was like whatever you have on hand make me this shirt but also if you want a version of this shirt same same sort of script and placement I put it up on teespring and <laughs> the link is down in the description I'm not trying to get rich off of this but I you know I just think it's hilarious that as a reviewer we are nerds on a power trip listen critics professional critics are lauded and applauded. But if you are just a reviewer, you're the scum of the earth. Um, you know, people love the ability to have an opinion until it's one that you kind of suck. <laughs> and then, <laughs> don't worry, it's calming tea. I don't know if it's working, but it's like calming tea.